Welcome to developing 2D and 3D games with Unity for Windows. I'm here with my good friend, Dave Oyles, and we have an exciting, exciting day planned for you today. We have tons of Unity learning content, how to develop 2D games, 3D games in Unity, bring them on over to Windows. We have such an exciting day. I'm very happy to be here. Likewise, thank you for having us. I'm Adam Tulipper, a technical evangelist with Microsoft. I focus on a whole bunch of different technologies, gaming, uh, cloud technologies, web technologies. I pretty much love everything tech related. So uh, this is gonna be exceptional day right here. Uh, been a software architect for many, many years. And David, why don't you tell us about yourself? Yes, I'm relatively new to Microsoft. I'm also a technical evangelist based out of Philadelphia. Uh, previously, I was at Comcast working on their uh, Xbox applications before joining my, uh, Microsoft. And now uh, kind of specialize in web development, video games, and the cloud. And a uh, pleasure to be here with Adam this morning, kind of going over all this Unity content with you guys. Very cool. So today we've got developing intro and, over, uh, intro and Unity overview, 2D game development, hmm? 2D and 3D asset creation, which I'm especially excited for that one because I'm an awful artist. And we have a special guest coming in for <laughs> special that. Special guest for that. Uh, 3D game development, building for the Windows platform, optimizing your games, ALM, Application Lifecycle Management in Unity, a uh, great session on marketing and monetization, one area where developers need a lot of help. <laughs> yep. And using Prime 31 to connect your Unity games to Azure. And finally, adding the finishing touches to your game. Yeah, so we'll have several evangelists coming in and out throughout many of these sessions, as, long, as well as some special guests from Unity and some other places too. So you'll kind of have a, a mixed group of faces throughout the, the next two days. That's right, you are going to see seven of us off and on the camera through the next two days. So it's a really good crowd, really good group of folks that we have here. So again, I can't say enough, very excited, but uh, I hope you are too. So let's set expectations. <laughs> Who is this event for? Well, hopefully everybody, but uh, primarily targeted towards beginner and intermediate Unity developers, C-sharp programmers. I would also say aspiring artists <laughs> yeah, because definitely. of the, the art sessions we're going to have on there as well. And fortunately, Unity makes it very easy for artists to get started as well. Suggested prereqs and supporting material, C-sharp fundamentals for absolute beginners. If you don't have any programming experience, that is on Microsoft Virtual Academy. And one of my favorite sites, digitaltutors.com, who has awesome Unity learning tech uh, content out there. I mean, there is a bunch of great free content out there that's pretty targeted paid content as well. Yeah, absolutely. They have step-by-step uh, -step tutorials on how to write an entire project from beginning to end. So highly suggest uh, you go check that out. And please join the MVA community. We love doing these things for you. Everybody that's here loves doing it for you. There is a ton of great content out there. There are over 2 million registered users now for Microsoft Virtual Academy. And you can get points for each event that you complete. Go to aka.ms MVA voucher, and there's a special code on there that does expire October 10th, so get on there and check it out. And all this content will be recorded right now, so if you do happen to miss some of this throughout the day, you can always catch up to it in the next couple of days uh, as it'll be stored on our site later on. Now, Dave, the fact that we love gaming yes. and we work for Microsoft, <laughs> I think this next slide shows something that's very cool. Uh, every time these announcements come out, I actually get, get pretty excited about this. I don't know about you, but that's why I came on board. Uh, it was largely to work with uh, independent gamers at Microsoft. That's right. So let's go down the list of some investments that Microsoft has made here. Prime 31 is a leading plugin writer for Unity. There's a year free for Prime 31 plugins for Microsoft. If you go to their website, go to the Microsoft section, you'll find, rather than prices, and a lot of them are typically like 75 bucks or so, you can download them for free there for a year. Secondly, and this one was extra, extra cool, Microsoft acquired Syntax Tree. If you've ever heard of Unity VS, mm -hmm. uh, that enables you to use Visual Studio to develop and debug your Unity code. Previously, you could only use it to, uh, as a code editor. This plugin allows you to also debug with it. And that was about a $100 product. Microsoft bought the company, turned around, added some additions to it, and those folks came on board here, and uh, now they re turn around, release it for free. Yeah, absolutely. So typically, uh, developers will often start writing code with Mono Develop, which is packaged for free with Unity, uh, but Visual Studio does tend to cost a bit of money, so uh, why don't you tell them a bit about Bispark and then how we can get many of the developers we work with free versions of Visual Studio. Bispark, great program for startups. If you are forming your own little game company, to me, you are a startup. The criteria are typically that your company, not you, are less than five years old, mm -hmm. uh, less than a million dollars in annual revenue, that you are a privately held company and working on a software product as a core part of your business, not just uh, consulting, for example. Go to bizspark.com or contact your local evangelist and uh, we can help you out with that locally as a resource as well. That gives you free Visual Studios, Windows, $150 a month credit to Azure for virtual machines, websites, and up to, I think, seven users on an account get that as well. Yes. And 
we partner with Unity to provide various offers. So right now, on Unity site, pages slash windows slash offer, there's a really cool offer going on that gives you a, you can get a free device, you can get free windows licenses. The current offer right now gives you, I think, a $100 voucher to Unity's asset store. So check out that site. There's always new stuff coming up on there. Check often. <laughs> so this session, we're going to be doing intro and architecture of Unity. In this module, it's going to be a basic intro and the interface. We're going to talk about game objects and components, essential parts inside of Unity, mm -hmm. prefabs and packages, and the architecture, architecture. Of, of Unity, <laughs> the application itself, and uh, quite a bit about how to architect your games as well, best practices, I suppose. Architecture is, coming from a software development world, yes. architecture is a very important subject. Uh, I think it's real important to understand how Unity works, its various components, how it kind of fits together, mm -hmm. and that's what we'll be talking there, the coding model on there. Absolutely. Uh, it is kind of unique. Coming from an enterprise software background yes. and going to game development, at first I had absolutely no idea where to start. Right, you have to understand the draw loop, the update loop, how that all ties together, um, Unity's component system. I'd heard of a game loop, Yep. but when it came down to it, I uh, didn't know how to write one for Unity, and uh, so we're going to show you some of that today, and hopefully this will all kind of make sense and add up. Yep. What do you think about this code model in there? Uh, say it again, I'm sorry. What do you think about the code model in Unity? Um, I actually enjoy it quite a bit. I like the fact that they give developers the opportunity to go with either C Sharp or JavaScript, uh, their own type safe Don't JavaScript. Don't forget Boo. Nobody and uses Boo, but you can't that is true. mention Boo. <laughs> Boo. Boo does absolutely exist. Um, I don't know how many people are using it at this point. I've never met a person yet. I've literally talking to you know, thousands of Unity And I've used this for about three or four years now. I have not run never. into anyone that either. How about you? Do you prefer one, one language over the other? Is, uh, C Sharp, by the way. And, and interesting enough, coming from a web development background, yes. and I love JavaScript. Same with me. Uh, but also, I, I like uh, C Sharp is more strongly typed on the Unity side, yes. so you can get away with less, which is good from an architectural standpoint as well. Absolutely. All right, so let's start talking about the intro and interface to Unity. Mm -hmm. Unity is, let's talk about what it is and what Unity is not. Sure. Unity is a game engine, but more importantly to me, it's also an ecosystem. I mean, there's tons of game engines out there, some very good game engines out there. Mm -hmm. um, some work in the web browser, some work across the console. What matters to me is the ecosystem. We're going to talk about the Unity Asset Store in a little bit and how uh, that kind of fits into this. Unity supports more platforms than any other publicly available tool that I could find. And we deal, being with Microsoft, many cross-platform products. Yeah, middleware uh, is our friend. Yep. Xamarin, I mean, even if you go to Azure Mobile Services, they will generate the code for you on our own website yep. to run things on iOS, Android, website, etc. So that being said, there's really great multi-platform support built in the Unity. Absolutely. It's used by hobbyists, students, uh, professional developers, major studios. Yeah. So this is for everybody. I've had folks mention to me, I'm writing my first game. Is Unity the right tool for me? Mm. <laughs> yes, it is absolutely. And so, it does hit like that broad spectrum of things. One of the few tools, like you say, that really can hit just about everything. Absolutely. Now let's talk about what Unity is not. Okay. And I hesitate to uh, say what it's not because Unity is always kind of adding new things on there. Um, they're acquiring other companies and adding their capabilities into the core products, mm -hmm. making it better and better. So Unity is not, though, as it stands today, a 2D image or vector graphic creation tool. In other words, think of like Photoshop, GIMP, Paint.net. You're not going to go into Unity and start drawing out a sprite. Right. Uh, Matt is going to show you later on today how you can do that. Unity is also not, and I put a big asterisk after this, uh, <laughs> it is not a 3D modeling environment. There are some very powerful 3D tools out there. Uh, there are free tools like Blender, pay tools like Autodesk Maya, 3D Studio Max, a sheet of 3D, there's a whole bunch of them out there. Mm -hmm. um, but Unity does not have built in a modeling environment. It does have a terrain system built in. Yes. So that is modeling in a sense. You can build out your trains. I did that about a year ago here for a virtual academy session. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does support many third party plugins because of that ecosystem. Huge selling point for that system or this Huge. platform because very, very few can even offer that at this point. Yeah. Huge. If this was small, this is huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, extensibility is another large key feature for this because if there's something you don't enjoy about the engine, often you can write that yourself, extend it, and if uh, it's of high enough quality, you can even sell it and make a, quite a living off that in an asset store. There are some folks that I believe have made over a million dollars off of Unity's asset store. So uh, 
keep that in mind. You can sell at your own assets on there, 3D assets. Well, we'll look at the asset store shortly. Uh, sure. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, right. but the asset store is amazing. Uh, but in the asset store, speaking of 3D modeling, you can get Pro Builder. Uh, there's other plugins as well. Pro Builder is one that I know because Matt uses that. Yep. And uh, that allows you to do some, some rudimentary 3D modeling inside of Unity. So that's why the big asterisk follows that. Right. All right, so features and capabilities of Unity. What can it provide you? What can it provide me and all of you attending today? Triple uh, A game quality. It is a good engine for your game. Unity provides an editor, which is what you work in, and that gives you the ability to do level assembly, where you can kind of drag and drop, assemble everything in there. Right. Uh, but more importantly to me, it gives you an in-editor gameplay experience. So you can develop, click play, run your game. Develop, click play, run your game. You don't have to do these separate builds and export, which really makes your workflow Fast. Or even the ability to drag and drop um, assets into a scene live is, is a huge selling point. Yes. Physics. We'll talk about the physics engines in a little bit. Programming with C Sharp, JavaScript, Boo. Yeah, One day I won't mention Boo anymore, but I still feel <laughs> like I, I need to for some reason. <laughs> 2D and 3D support. So Unity uh, was always a 3D tool to start, and they didn't have built in. 2D support until a couple versions ago. They had various plugins in the asset store to allow you yes, to do yes. that. And uh, now they have added some pretty cool 2D support built in. Yeah, so as of uh, November of 2013, that's when they finally added those 2D tools, along with many assets uh, and pre-built scenes that developers can actually use and engage with. Free stuff you can download and check out and yep. kickstart your 2D game. Audio, 2D audio, 3D audio. Yep. You hear a gunshot in the distance over there, you can hear from your right-hand side, gunshot over there, left-hand side, backing tracks, it supports a bunch of different audio formats. Very powerful audio there. And particle effects, one of my favorite things. Absolutely, shurikens, beautiful thing to work with. If you want, you being you, because you're on the East Coast, if yep, you want yep. snow, uh, for I me, I live in California, so smoke, fires, earthquakes, right? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you can generate all that through particle effects. You can Absolutely. generate little ghosts coming out of the ground. You can do snow, rain, all sorts of amazing things. We'll look at particle effects very briefly in this as well. And the animation system, two animation systems, the legacy animation system and Mechanum, which allows you to do so many cool things. Previously, maybe if you had a character uh, shooting a gun, mm -hmm. you had a character running. If you wanted to merge the two, well, you needed a separate animation of a shooting running character. Right. And now with Unity, it will actually blend those on the fly. You can say, hey, from the waist down, I want you to do these animations, which is running, and then from the waist up, I want you to do whatever other animations I apply to it. So an amazing system called Necking Them there. Now the asset store. Nearly All right. everything that you need for your game. <laughs> Complete projects, 3D models. Uh, we'll explore the interface real quick in the asset store shortly. It is absolutely amazing what you can find there. Makes you wonder how it got by before. I know. Well, I didn't develop games before. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I didn't get by it. <laughs> all right, so let's go right into talking about the environment in Unity. It's all about the scene. And we're going to explore the scene in the interface shortly. Let's just talk about a scene first. Think of a scene as a level in your game. Okay. If you have multiple levels, you'll have multiple scenes. And your game is going to be a collection of one to many scenes. Okay. Make sense so far? Scenes, Absolutely. I'm with you. Scenes are what's included in your build. In other words, when you provide a game to someone, it's because you have various scenes that have been compiled and packaged up into that build. Now, do I have to include every scene that I'm building uh, or working on for my game? Great question. You do not. So... Okay. One of the games we're working on right now, I think we have uh, 38 scenes or something in there. Holy cow. And there's, I think, three gameplay scenes. The rest are all different test scenes, and okay. controller test scenes, weapon test scenes, everything like that. Okay, so it makes yeah. it kind of pretty easy to test and debug as I'm moving along. Absolutely. And I take the best of, of each project. Absolutely. You can have many test scenes, not in the final. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> so, I can't say this enough. Remember this icon. Okay. This icon is the all-important icon because to folks that are new with Unity, if you close Unity and you go back and you open it, you might not see what you were just working on there. Mm -hmm. That's because a lot of times you have to go find your scene and open it. You didn't lose your work. You just right. have to go find the scene, provide that you saved your work. Yep. <laughs> find the scene. All right, let's open up Unity and talk about the interface here. The first time you're going to open Unity, you will see this lovely dialog box here. That looks like you're creating a new test project. Call that new Unity project. All of this right here, you might want to do this to start. I know I wanted to do that because I didn't know what any of these meant the first time I opened up Unity. Right. These are all various packages, pre-packaged components that Unity and other folks provide that you can bring into Unity. If I want a guy to run around in my world, I can bring in a character 